Hey, it's your boy, Sergeant Hunk Dimensions. Uh, it's the second time recording uh, this review for Avatar Sentai Don Brothers Episode 4. Um, so, last episode we ended with um, Don Momotaro attacking his team members after defeating the, you know, Monster of the Week. And um, uh, um, we start the episode with him doing that. Um, a few of them uh, get knocked out pretty quickly. Kiji Brother, Inu Brother, Sour Brother actually takes a few hits before he's knocked out of transformation and sent away. Um, which seems to be kind of the gimmick that they don't all untransform together right there. They get sent back to wherever location they were. So it's kind of cool. Um, but uh, um, Haruka actually says to him, you know, like, stop. Like, why are we doing this? Whatever. He's like, wants a contest duel. Which says to me that I'm thinking the Dom Momotaro side of him is like a separate persona that wants to like which are and they're both like two sides of the same coin like that side is trying to like push the team to be stronger whereas um Moe Taro was a little less confrontational than that I guess you could say um but anyway um she gets knocked out and sent back through her portal her little door or whatever and uh she goes back to his delivery place and sees that they're momentarily closed because of the black bear incident from last week with the delivery man that was delivering darkness um and she's all mad and like yelling at the building that that's stupid so, um, because that happened, uh, Momoi Taro goes to um, Pheasant Consulting or something like that, which is funny because Kiji Brothers' motif is a pheasant, but um, pretty sure. Uh, and uh, sees Tsuyoshi Kijino there, Kiji Brother, and um, they're working on a um, consulting gig where there's a onigiri shop that is um, going to close soon or something like that. Um, one second here, I'm trying to get a good read of my notes. Yeah, so it's a failing onigiri shop, um, so it'll become more profitable. And so they go there, and he has, Taro has um, the shop owner make him some onigiri. And uh, he eats it, and he says, oh, it's pretty good. And he's like, really? He says, yeah, I'd probably give it 80 points. He's like, oh, great. He's like, out of 100. It's not a perfect score. Um, we start to unravel the idea that um, Taro is a bit of a perfectionist, so much so that he wants other people just to be as perfect as possible also, which is in small doses can help push people to be better, but can get really annoying if you keep continuously trying to push that on other people. Um, yeah, and so uh, in this digital prison, Jin talks to Haruka and reveals the backstory to um, uh, Taro. Uh, she calls out to him and the door opens, she goes through it, and she's there. And he says that when he was a kid, he was always the best at everything he could do. He would always try and, like, you know, be the best as he could at everything. And when he would see people doing things like folding towels in one instance or somebody making a Gundam Gunpla, you know, little um, Gundam model, he would basically do it for them and show them the right way to do it, which would clearly rub people the wrong way. Um, and it got so bad um, that... Uh, um, people actually, like, moved away from where they were living... <laughs> Because they couldn't stand him anymore, basically. Um, one second here. Yeah, so it, it was happening so much that Jin um, was actually... Actually, I'm sorry, Jin. Uh, Taro was asking his father if a festival was going on. So again, I'm thinking what happened to him as a kid there kind of made this little split personality thing happen once he became a Don brother. Um, where he's a little more focused on like a festival, laugh away your troubles. It's like... Damo Wataro is like his best self almost, like what he wants to be maybe. I don't know, there's some kind of different personality switch between the two, which I find really interesting. Um, so she understands and she wants to know a little more and he's like, oh nope, your time's up for now and kicks her out. Um, so while this is going on, uh, um, she uh, at one point um, doesn't really think that it's like enough to act the way he does and thinks he's just oblivious. And so her, and she actually ends up seeing Sour Brother, she doesn't know it's Sour Brother, um, end up seeing this wife, or like this mom and her daughter, and the daughter drops a ball across the street, and of course she runs out to get the, get the ball, and the mom's like, no, the car will hit you. And they both transform at the same point to save the mom and the daughter, and untransform in front of each other. So they know that each other are Don Brother. So that's kind of cool, we get that reveal. And she even asks him, like, what's going on with Momo Taro? Momo Taro, why do you think he attacked us? He's like, well, we're both not very good at fighting, right? She goes, well, yeah. He's like, we're not classically, like, combat trained, but he is. What if maybe he's possibly trying to teach us, trying to, like, train us in, like, a surprise attack type of way? And she's like, huh, I never thought about it like that, maybe. And so they decide to start training. We don't see a ton of it till the end of the episode. But they start decide to start training a little bit so they can be better, you know, for him or whatever, or, like, impress him or get the jump on him, whatever. Because he seems to want them to come back, you know, come at them. Um, 
Meanwhile, while this is happening at the Onigiri shop, the Rolling Onigiri shop, <clears throat> uh, the shop owner has decided to go sample other nearby shops because uh, Kiji Brothers said that uh, Taro was being a little too hard on him. He said, why don't you go sample some of the other successful shops and maybe that'll give you some ideas on how to spice up your Onigiri to be better. And he's like, yeah, sure. And so he goes to do that and he tells Taro, you can't always like, you know, be so hard on people. Sometimes you got to praise them even if they haven't done anything exactly right or worthy of it just to kind of give them the motivation to do better. And he's like, well, I've always been taught that, like, you know, true honesty comes from the heart. And when you lie, that's hiding that honesty. So that's kind of like Taro's thing right now is he's so honest to a point where he doesn't understand he can offend people with it. Because, um, again, he was shielded from that as a kid where he wasn't, um, his, dad, his, his adoptive dad tried his best to make sure that he never saw that the people didn't want them there. Um, yeah, so uh, he says... Uh, yeah, that's not, he's because he tells the guy, that the chef, that's right, that the Onigiri is not emotionally um, strong enough, like it doesn't make emo enough of an emotional reaction in you when you eat it to make you want to come keep supporting it. And the guy takes it kind of hard, but he understands, and that's when he goes to find the other shops. While he's doing so, he's getting kind of jealous, though. And um, you can see the like building of a Sentai Oni thing. It's uh, the Oranger one. And so eventually he gets back to the shop and um, tries again, and we also get this cut with Inu brother. Um, so we see him walking around at night in like an alleyway somewhere. And these two guys approach him and they're like, oh, hey, you're, you know, Tsukasa, whatever his name is, Tsukasa Inu, Inuyoshi or something. Um, his human name I was called by their ranger designation personally. Um, and they, they're like, oh, he's like, yeah. And they're like, well, your uh, dad's in the hospital and he really needs some help. He needs some money. And then he's like, hmm, interesting. Like, why is that interesting? He's like, I don't have a dad. Like, either his dad's dead or gone or whatever. And so he's like, there's something else going on. He pulls on the glasses, sees that they're Anoni, the henchmen of the series, um, posing as humans. I love this thing where the henchmen are just randomly out there screwing with people. Again, it adds a lot more to them not just being a soulless henchman. Like, there's a purpose to it. Um, and it's clear that the brain persons are trying to, in some certain ways, screw with people's lives. I'm not sure what the aim is exactly, because they're sometimes creating the sentai Oni, but they're also destroying them, too, thereby killing the person, which is weird. But whatever. Um, so there's another little subplot within the Onigiri thing where Taro starts training the staff there, the kitchen staff, who are really lazy, really hard on them. They're trying their best, but they're kind of falling apart a little bit. And KG Brother steps in and is like, you can't keep doing this. You have to praise them even a little bit. And that's the thing that comes up about, like, I don't want to lie to people. I have to be honest. It's like, you can, but there's a way you can do that without alienating people. So it's a nice character development part from Amoy Taro and for KG Brother, him standing out for himself finally. Um, he has a moment actually with his wife where she asks him to stand up and she's like, if you love me, you will. And he stands up straight. And it's kind of like trying to mirror this, like standing up for yourself or having a backbone, you know? Um, and so I like that because it's, it's both building each of them, the two of them, and having them connect with each other. So I like that too. Um, so, uh, Subasa, not Tsukasa, that's right. So, um, and next day at the shop, guy comes back, he, um, um, Tries again with the Onigiri, and he gives it 99 points, Taro. And he's like, what? Why not 100? And he gets really angry. And uh, Taro leaves, and Kiji Brother stays with him, and he transforms into a Sentai to the orange one. And Kiji Brother's like, well, i got to stop this myself. This is my consulting gig. You know, this is my responsibility. You know, I have to try and save him. Because he remembers that if they're the ones, the Don Brothers are the ones to defeat the monster, it turns them back into a human. Whereas if the brain persons do it, it completely deletes them. They're gone. So, at least allegedly, what we can see. Um, so we get a good fight here with Kiji Brother and the rest of the team eventually as well. Um, the down, the down blasters like appear to Haruka and Sour Brother, so it seems like they don't always just you know have them out all the time. They can just appear to them when they're needed, pretty much. Which again d definitely ties into like the video game virtual reality esque nature of certain things within the show, which I like. Um, so there's Summon as well, along with of course Inu Brother, and uh, we get a dual Avataro Change, which is pretty cool. So we get. Loop on yellow, loop on blue for Sour Brother and Oni Sister. And also, um, we get uh, um, Real Soul Pink and Real Soul Black for um, Inu Brother and Kiji Brother. Um, be interesting to see what they do for Inu Brother going forward because there's not that many Black Rangers for the team's, you know, Go Kaiju forward. There are some, but there's a lot more greens than there are blacks in a lot of the teams. So it'll be interesting to see how they do that. 
Um, he seems to favor Rio Black right now, so kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, so we get that dual one there fighting together. Really cool. Um, even clearly plays the henshin noises from those devices, which I just love the down blaster. And you really need to review that. My Toku told you on that. I've got to work on that. Um, so uh, that was really good. Um, really nice fight there. They finally transformed back, and they all worked together doing the finishing attack, team finishing attack, to defeat the monster. Before this, Dama Wartar arrives in his little altar form, little tiny robot form, and uses the... Um, I think it was the, the Tokyuger one. The Tokyuger? Pretty sure it's the Tokyuger one. I think. I'm not sure. He uses one of the altar gears, though, and um, fights off um, Sanoni. I think it's her Snowy. Sonona and Sononi. Yeah, Sononi, the one other guy, basically. Not the main one, but the other guy. Um, and uh, fights him off, and he kind of leaves or whatever, and uh, mentions to the other ones, like, they're kind of annoying. He's like, yeah, it seems to be that when we destroy one of our monsters, it's gone. Whereas when they do, it brings them back. They're very irritating, but they're also very interesting. So I wonder why they're so interested. I wonder if there's a connection. Maybe, like, the brain persons were the first, like, failed team of Don Brothers, and now they're, like warped beyond repair and that's just what they do now i don't know um but uh anyway so we uh they finally defeat the monster together with the team attack which i love seeing the mom was on mom was on mom was on also if you're looking for a season that doesn't have the red ranger leader as like the main focus of like the mystery and the story wrong season i guess because <laughs> it seems to be that momo taro is fairly well like centered here at least until we get other rangers joining up eventually, which I'm, I think we're supposed to get. So, um, anyway, they end up saving the guy. They destroy him, turn him back to Norhuman. And um, he, of course, repents for what he did and everything. And he ends up becoming successful. And in the end, everybody's pretty much happy. Um, we do see at the very, very end of it, Memorial Taro actually walk by Tsubasa um, just, just very briefly. So that's setting up next episode, which is supposed to be kind of focused on Tsubasa and your brother. Um, and getting the whole team together, transforming together. There has been, like, a couple clips that have come up online that I think are regional locked, but I've seen on Twitter that are, like, little, like, um, Toei, you know, um, Tokusatsu World Fan Club little videos or extra videos. And it shows them, like, as, like, uh, Zenkaiser Black is, like, their mentor, and he's, like, they have, like, their own little, like, pose that they do, you know, like, their, um, their, their roll call pose, but they do, like, a, like this, and they go, <laughs> like, from the dance. And then we see their kind of their roll call thing, which is interesting. So, um, again, I really like the episode. Um, I probably would give it probably a strong 9 out of 10, just because I wish that um, the part talking about Charles' backstory went a little bit farther. But I do understand they're trying to juggle, like, a few storylines intersecting here, so there's only so much time. Um, so it's not like... I hated the episode because of that. I'm just very interested and enthralled with who Taro is and what his connection is to everybody and why he acts so differently as himself and as Donald with Taro. So, um, but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the review of the slash recap today. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys think of the episode. Did you guys love it? Did you hate it? Kind of in the middle? Are you guys excited for it? I'm personally really invested in the show so far. And this isn't just like a recency bias because of how much I love Zenkaiger. I just really like Tom Brothers. It's very unique and interesting. And it's doing an anniversary vibe in a different way that's not taking over the whole show. But not forgetting that it has that as part of its DNA, if you will. Um, as far as content soon, um, clearly my revised review will come up pretty soon here. I'm going to record that today. Um, I'm going to try my very best to get my Toko Toy Reviews done when those are going to happen. Maybe tonight is the day of recording or this weekend. But I really want to get my ones up for the Don Blaster and for the Demon's Driver. I know those have been out for a while for other people, but I just recently got mine. And I want to kind of show off what it can do, what they can each do. Um, and as far as Common Rider Veil, the little mini series of Common Rider Veil, I do plan on doing something once all the episodes are out. I'm going to, wa I'm going to watch it week to week, but once all the episodes are out, and done with the five episodes then i'll do a video on the whole little mini series talking about it and everything like that so um but as always thank you so much for watching i love you guys so much thank you for subscribing liking commenting sharing all that good stuff watching today's video and others um subscribe for more toko content and as always stay hooked connections i'll talk to you later Bye bye